Today's episode of the Island Archives podcast is brought to you by Old Road Rum. Old Road Rum is driven by a desire to celebrate the cultural history of St. Kitts and Nevis and is tropically aged for 12 years to present the pure expression of a well-crafted rum. Today on the Island Archive podcast, we will travel back in time to the mother colony of the West Indies and judge a particularly interesting case. Beto Douglas was born in 1772 to a white father and an enslaved mother on the Romney Plantation in St. Kitts. Shout out to Old Road. She was listed on the initial slave register in 1817 for St. Kitts as a mulatto, aka a mixed race individual who was 45 years of age with two children. Charles Masham II, Earl of Romney, a British nobleman and Conservative Party politician, was the absentee lord of the estate on St. Kitts. This meant that although he may have never even visited the island, the plantation and everything on it were his property, including all 432 slaves. It was also common for the on-ground operations to be overseen by agents. The agent for Romney Plantation was John George Goldfrapp. Douglas approached Goldfrapp to purchase the freedom of the two sons, so he wrote to the Earl to state her case for freeing them, and the Earl agreed, but said that the next agent would finalize the deal. Many years passed and nothing happened, and yet another agent was presiding over the estate. His name was Richard Cadden. Cadden served as an obstruction to Douglas's submission for her son's freedom by insisting that she pay him three and a half dollars a month from her earnings for the small house that she lived in and her daily meals. I know this doesn't sound like much, but this was the 1800s, so three and a half bucks is a lot of money. Douglas complained that the fee was far too high, especially in those hard economic times. Kind of reminds me of today, actually. She often owed money because of the high fees, but was resolute to not engage in any criminal behavior like prostitution or theft to meet the unrealistic and harsh demands. As punishment for not meeting her obligations on time, Cadden would often dole out tough punishment like withholding food, threatening with imprisonment, and ordering her to be beaten. Unsurprisingly, Douglas ran away and petitioned Governor Charles William Maxwell in 1825, describing her unjust and punitive treatment at the hands of Cadden. Maxwell was a colonial administrator, presiding over certain colonies at that time. Sadly, Douglas was initially unsuccessful, as the grand jury decided that she had been unruly and that they could not determine that the punishment had been excessive. She was ordered to return to the estate. So here's where things get even more interesting. After the jury handed out their judgment, Maxwell sent the case to the desk of Henry Bathurst III, a minister of parliament who was a major figure at the time on colonial policymaking. Maxwell argued that the treatment had been illegal, but said that it was normal on the island and, quote, considered justifiable and proper. Wow. Bathurst disagreed and noted that there had been no favorable witnesses called in a trial and argued that her punishment was disproportionate to her offense. In 1827, Douglas took her case to colonial courts where it became an incredibly popular proceeding and abolitionists worldwide jumped on the bandwagon in her support. However, the court said that Douglas had tarnished Cadden's reputation and again was banished to the estate to be confined for six months and 11 days. Ouch. Her case had become famous in the colonies and many causes even collected money to buy her freedom, but the cash was refused. Finally, Douglas was granted her freedom three months before the Abolition Act passed in July 1833, a move which her case had widely encouraged because of its notoriety. Beto Douglas is an international icon of the resistance and emancipation movement, and her story 
is one that had to be told in the Island Archive. The Island Archive podcast is a Pelican Media Group production and is brought to you by Old Road Rum. To hear more, log on to www.islandarchive.com or check us out on all streaming platforms.